On Wednesday, 7th August, DBS announced in a boss filing that Chief Executive Piyush Gupta will step down from his position. He will be succeeded by Tan Sushon, who was appointed Deputy CEO on the same day, alongside her current role as Group Head of Institutional Banking. Tan, 56, will officially take over as CEO when Gupta retires at the next annual general meeting on 28 March 2025. In a statement, DBS highlighted that Tan Sushon brings extensive experience to her new role. With over 35 years in consumer banking, wealth management, and institutional banking, her career includes roles in major financial centres such as Hong Kong, Tokyo, and London. Tan joined DBS in 2010, initially focusing on building the wealth management business. She later managed both consumer banking and wealth management and institutional banking, which together contribute 90% of DBS's income. Tan has also led the bank's digitalization strategy and has been president commissioner of DBS Indonesia since 2014. Outside of DBS, Tan has served on various boards in government, education and women's leadership and was a nominated member of parliament from 2012 to 2014 after quitting as a member of the People's Action Party. She holds a degree from Oxford University and has completed leadership programmes at Harvard and Stanford. DBS noted that Tan's appointment is the result of a decade-long succession planning process, during which a strong field of internal candidates underwent an extended development programme to enhance their experience, exposure and skills for the role. DBS Chairman Peter Siar praised Piyush Gupta's leadership, stating, Under Piyush's leadership, DBS has been transformed into a high-performing, high-returns institution recognised for both stability and innovation. He also endorsed Tan Sushan as Gupta's successor, noting, Sushan's strategic orientation, track record in building businesses, familiarity with technology, leadership ability, as well as strong stakeholder management and communication skills, make her the ideal successor. Importantly for us, she also embodies the DBS culture. I am pleased that a Singaporean with global experience has emerged as the best candidate to lead an iconic Singapore institution and build on the legacy that Piyush will leave us. I am deeply honoured to have been selected to succeed Piyush. Leading the continued transformation of DBS is a tremendous privilege and responsibility. Some months after Piyush joined as CEO, he called to persuade me to join DBS. I responded to that call and quit the foreign bank I was working at the next day, says Tan. Sushan has worked closely with me for more than a decade to bring the bank to where it is today. She was instrumental in building the wealth management, consumer banking and institutional banking businesses since she joined and took personal ownership to operationalise our digitalization strategy. With her appointment, we can be assured that the trajectory of DBS transformation will continue well into the future, says Gupta. DBS reported a net profit of $2.8 billion for the second quarter of fiscal year 2024, ending 30th June, marking a 4% increase year-on-year -year and surpassing the consensus estimate of $2.72 billion. The return on equity for the quarter was 18.2%, down from 19.2% in the same period last year. For the first half of fiscal year 2024, the bank achieved a record net profit of $5.76 billion, up 9% year-on-year from the previous record. The ROE for the six months was 18.8%. Gupta has led DBS since 2009, joining the bank after a 27-year career at Citigroup. Under his leadership, DBS was recognised for its technological advancements and was named World's Best Bank by publications like Euromoney and Global Finance. In 2019, DBS was also listed among the top 10 most transformative organisations of the decade by the Harvard Business Review. In 2020, Mr. Gupta was awarded the Public Service Star by Singapore's president. However, under his leadership, DBS has faced several service disruptions, including a significant outage in October 2023. Following this incident, 
the Monetary Authority of Singapore imposed penalties on DBS, restricting the bank from making non-essential IT changes or acquiring new business ventures for six months. Additionally, DBS was required to set aside extra funds as a buffer. In response to the disruptions, Mr Gupta announced in February that the bank's senior management team would take responsibility by implementing pay cuts. He accepted a 30% reduction in his variable pay, amounting to 4.14 million Singapore dollars. Consequently, his total compensation decreased from 15.4 million Singapore dollars in 2022 to 11.2 million Singapore dollars the following year.